Hey guys, Chris Fix here with my E46 that I'm turning into an endurance race car and today I'll be stripping this car of as much weight as possible for two reasons. One, weight reduction because it's a race car. We want less weight into the corners, less weight while braking, less weight while accelerating and it's a 16 hour race so every pound counts. And two, we have a cage builder who's fabbing up a cage and needs that entire interior gutted so he could fit it and weld it into the car. So I thought it'd be cool to show you guys how heavy different parts of the car are and how much weight you could actually pull out of a car. And to do that, I have these really nice race scales. Each one of these scales goes underneath the tire and that'll give us an accurate reading of how much this car weighs before and after and how much each part we remove weighs. Now, not only do I wanna get a before and after weight, but I wanna see how much quicker this car accelerates from zero to 60 before and after our weight reduction and brakes from 60 to zero before and after our weight reduction. And to do that, I have a GPS unit that will accurately track our results. It'll give us our zero to 60. We could check our braking from 60 to zero. That way we could see the acceleration before and after our weight reduction, as well as our braking before and after. So let's head to the track and put our car to the test. Okay, so we're at the track and we're gonna line up in the same exact spot for each run. And to keep it consistent, every single time I'll drop the clutch at 4,500 RPMs. All right, and this is so easy to launch because of the all-wheel drive. That was an awesome shift in the second. And it took us 6.79 seconds. Let's do that again. Well, that was a little weird. Not the best launch. Good shift. And 6.88 seconds. One last time. Good launch. Good shift into second. And 6.83 seconds, awesome. Nice and consistent with all three launches taking about 6.8 seconds from zero to 60. Now let's test the braking. All right, for the braking, I'm gonna accelerate to 60 miles an hour and then I'll hold it there until I hit the cones. Once I get to the cones, I'm gonna slam on the brakes and we're gonna get a measurement. I'm using a GPS to be accurate, so let's see what we get. and we have consistent but horrible braking distances at around 170 feet. But at least we're consistent, which is important, so we can compare this to the car after we gut it. So now let's head home, let's see how much this car weighs, and see how much weight we could pull out of it. All right, and back from the track. That acceleration blew me away. That is way better than I expected for this 250,000 mile car. But that braking, well, that braking was pretty bad. My Hummer brakes quicker than this car. And that could be due to just old brakes that are worn out and old tires that are worn out. So don't worry about it. We will replace the brakes and tires before the race. But right now, let's go see how much weight we could remove from this car. First, we need to get the scales under each tire. So let's jack up the car. Then we can slide the scales under the front tires and carefully let the car down onto the scales. Good. And same with the rear. Slide the scales under the car and then carefully let the car down onto the scales. All right, so with the car on the scales, I've always wanted to do this, see what my car actually weighs accurately. Okay, so it's a 330XI. We have a quarter tank of fuel. Remember, this is the all-wheel drive version. What are your guesses? What do we think? And this is brand new, so we're gonna do something that is very satisfying. Let's turn it on. We wanna see our total weight. And we have 3,370 pounds. And I have a goal of getting this car below 3,000 pounds. I don't know if it's gonna be possible, but let's get started and see. So here's the breakdown for the weight reduction categories. First, we're gonna see how much all the seats weigh, then how much everything in the trunk weighs, then we'll remove all the plastic interior trim and see how much that weighs, then we'll see how much all the carpet and sound deadening weighs, then we'll see how much the headliner and sunroof weigh, and finally, we need to remove the major components from the dash, including the airbags, and we'll see how much they weigh. So enough talk, let's get started and start removing stuff from the car. The first thing we're gonna remove are the front seats and the back seats, and let's see how much they weigh. Usually seats are pretty heavy. So to remove a seat, there's typically four fasteners holding it in. There's two in the front and two in the rear. So let's slide the seat all the way back to remove the two front nuts located right here. And yes, I know, I'll be using power tools, but I need to speed through all this because there's tons of fasteners to get the whole interior apart. So let's get these back two bolts out. Good, and then we need to lift the seat up to get access to one last bolt, which holds the seat belt to the seat. Good, and with that removed, we could tilt the seat back and get access to the wires under the seat, and then we need to disconnect this harness, like so, 
And finally, everything is disconnected so we can remove the seat from the car. And man, oh man, is this thing heavy. Now let's remove the passenger side seat and you already saw how to do this, so. And what a mess hidden under those seats. Don't worry about that, we'll get to that once we remove the carpets. Now let's remove the rear seats and check out our weight savings. The bottom bench seat pops out just like that and then it could be removed. Next, let's remove the two side pieces from the backrest and they just pop right out as well. And then to get the two back pieces out, fold them down and then we need to unscrew the one bolt that's holding these two seat backs together. And now each of these pieces will come out. And these are actually surprisingly heavy. And just like that, we shed 180 pounds just by removing the OEM seats. And OEM seats from all makes and models are very heavy. That's just how it is. There's a lot of safety items in there. Airbags, the structural support so they don't just bend in an accident, and electric motors for the power seats, which is very heavy. So 65 pounds for the driver's seat, 65 pounds for the passenger seat, and the rear bench seat is 50 pounds. So we removed 180 pounds in just seats, bringing us to 3,190 pounds. And the good thing is our new racing seat that we're gonna install and all the brackets only weighs 30 pounds. So we just saved a ton of weight and it looks like we might hit that under 3,000 pound mark. So now let's move to the trunk of the car so we could disconnect the battery and gut the trunk. So let's pop the trunk open. And there's a lot of junk in this trunk to remove, but first let's go disconnect the battery. And you always want to remove the negative terminal first when disconnecting a battery. Then we could remove the positive terminal. And let's get this heavy old BMW battery out of here, which still works pretty good and is valuable. It weighs over 45 pounds and I already sold it to buy this battery. It's a used battery I picked up off a Prius in a junkyard for $25. Plus it only weighs 25 pounds. A small battery will work just fine because we're removing most of the electronics and we really just need this to start the car and keep it running. And with the battery disconnected and swapped out, now we could get all this junk out of this trunk. And that was 25 pounds right there. But wait, there's more. We have a trunk floor, which is made of wood. And then we have our very heavy spare tire, which we're not gonna need, as well as a heavy jack and this light piece of plastic, but every pound counts. And since every pound counts, there's some sound deadening back here in the trunk that we need to remove. And this stuff is what gives BMWs of this era that crayon and waxy smell that you get every time you get in one of these cars. All right, and then finally, all this spaghetti here. Look at these wires. They're all disconnected. They're tapped. This is a mess here. Hopefully that doesn't cause any issues. But this right here is our factory amp. This is what we need for our Harman Kardon system to sell it, which is going to bring us good money. And this also weighs a good five pounds. And don't forget about the back of the trunk. Good. And with that, we removed everything from the trunk, except a little bit of sound deadening here, here, and right back there. But we'll remove that when we remove the rest of the sound deadening after we get that carpet out. You have to use dry ice and it should be done all at once. I'll show you that trick in a little bit. So everything we removed from the trunk right here weighed 75 pounds, which is awesome. So we have about 25 pounds worth of plastic, a little bit of sound deadening, some carpets, and then we have about 50 pounds worth of a spare, some tools, and also some fluids because this is a BMW, you always need some extra oil. So with our trunk completely gutted, now let's move on to our next step and remove all the plastic trim from the interior. And we're gonna start from the A pillar up here and move our way to the back of the car. There's a ton of plastic in this interior, so it's gonna be interesting to see how much weight we actually remove. So this A pillar trim is held in by three torque screws and with those screws removed, this piece comes right out. Now we can remove the door sill plastic by pulling up hard and for once, none of these plastic clips broke. Next, let's remove the plastic trim under the steering wheel, which also just pops out. Now, down here, we want to keep our hood pull working, but first we need to remove it temporarily to remove the plastic around it. Then we could pull the trim out, and then we could screw that hood pull back in. So if we need to open the hood, we can. Good. Next, let's pop out the outside door sill plastic. And now we're on to the B-pillar plastic, starting with this down here, covering the seatbelt. And the trick for all these plastics is using a hard jerking motion. That way it pops right off and you don't break anything. If you pull slowly, you're more likely to break the plastic clips holding it in. Now we can remove the seatbelt since we're not going to need these anymore. And these are actually pretty heavy. So moving to the back door, we have our inner door sill plastic. And then the outer door sill plastic. Then finally we can move to the rear deck and seat pillar. And then for the seat pillar trim, we need to pop out the light and disconnect the harness. And then this trim comes right out as well. Now to get this rear deck out, first we need to remove the speakers, so pop the speaker cover off, then unscrew the three screws holding in the speaker, and then the speaker trim and speaker come right out. And for whatever reason, the wires to these speakers were already disconnected. Now with all that removed, that allows us to remove the rear deck. Beautiful. And then we can remove all the heavy seat belts back here, as well as the plastic trim, this insulation, and the crayon smelling sound deadening. 
And although these pieces don't weigh a lot, when you add it all up, it is a good three to five pounds just back here. So it adds up quickly. All right, so with everything removed from the rear deck, I removed all the plastic trim on the passenger side, the B pillar and the A pillar. Now let's go and remove the center console. We need to be careful with this because it's in good shape and we're gonna be selling it to recuperate some of the car's cost. So remove the rear tray and disconnect the harness. And then under there, there are two screws to remove and this plastic trim comes right off. Now at the front, we need to get under the shifter trim. So pop up the leather boot, unscrew the two screws holding the trim in. And now the trim could be moved, giving us access to two more screws holding the center console in. Now that the center console's free, we could lift it out like that. Actually, there's one more harness for the hazard switch. So let's disconnect that. And now it's free. And finally, there's two bolts holding in the armrest. Then that could be removed. Good, and now we have to tighten back down the two bolts so the e-brake is held in place. Good. All right, so everything we have here weighs a total of 50 pounds, bringing our weight down to 3,043 pounds. We're getting really close to that 3,000 pound mark. I think we're gonna do it. Now, look at this. This is mostly plastics, 25 pounds worth of plastics to be exact. And our center console was the heaviest plastic piece at around eight to 10 pounds. And that's pretty good because plastic pieces are very light. There's just a bunch of them, so it adds up. And then the other 25 pounds comes from our seatbelt pretensioners, from our speakers, and our sound deadening from that rear deck that we removed. So with all the major plastic pieces removed from the car, now let's move on to the next step and remove the carpets. And with these messy carpets, I'm not even gonna bother vacuuming. I'm gonna try to pull it all out and contain it. Just save me some time. Now we're gonna start up here in the front and we have to unscrew a couple things, remove the gas pedal, and then we could take the carpet out. So first we need to remove our gas pedal. And to do that, there is a tab here. So get a flathead screwdriver and push down on the tab. And then that'll slide right out like that. Then we could disconnect the harness from the pedal and this plastic bracket has a bolt at the top we need to remove. And then finally we could carefully pry this from the bottom of the bracket and pull on it without breaking it. Perfect. And then that'll pop out just like that. Now we have this one fastener that needs to be unscrewed holding in the front of the carpet and a plastic fastener on the side that we have to pop out. And finally, we need to cut the carpet over here, but don't cut deep, just on the surface because there's wires under here. And then that'll allow us to remove the front driver's side piece of carpet like so. And then under that, we have a piece of styrofoam that needs to be removed as well. Good, now let's remove the rear section of the carpet by pulling it up and out. Sheesh, this is a lot heavier than I expected for just some piece of carpet. So get this carpeting out of the car. Good, and now we have one last piece left. And I already cut the edge of the carpet so we could pull it right out like that. And don't forget that piece of styrofoam. And we might as well remove the rear vent as well. And check that out. We hit our milestone by removing 45 pounds worth of carpeting. That is crazy how heavy this carpeting is. But we're below 3,000 pounds now. And just take a look at this. Look at how thick this carpeting is. Look at the insulation on it. No wonder this is so heavy. So carpeting, 45 pounds removed. And we're not done yet. We still have to remove the sound deadening that's bonded to the metal. Now it might be a little difficult to see to the untrained eye, but we have a bunch of sound deadening in this car. You can see right here, this darker gray, that is all sound deadening. That dark gray right there, that's all sound deadening. Sound deadening, sound deadening. All that up there, sound deadening. All that in there, sound deadening. That all has to be removed. Very important because this stuff is flammable once there's a fire. Also the welder who's putting the cage in can't weld to this. He needs bare metal to weld to, so it all needs to be taken out. And in order to do that, because this is very tricky to remove, this is from the factory, it's like a tar, it's glued on there, it's not coming off easily, but the trick is to use some of this, dry ice. So that is 30 pounds of dry ice, and that is gonna be enough to do the sound deadening in this entire car, because we have a lot of sound deadening. Look at all of that. There is a ton, and that's a lot of work to do. So let me show you how to do this. Now, before we begin, make sure you open up all the windows and all the doors. Dry ice is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen. It'll displace oxygen. So you don't wanna work inside a closed vehicle. Make sure all the doors are open. You'll have plenty of airflow. That way you don't suffocate. Very important. Otherwise, wear gloves so you don't get frostbite and let me show you how to do this. All right, so the first step is to dump a layer of dry ice onto the sound deadening so it covers it completely. And then a trick is to insulate it. So grab a couple of sheets of tin foil and cover the dry ice and this gets that sound deadening even colder. Now after about 15 minutes, this panel should be frozen so remove the tin foil and expose that sound deadening. Then you wanna use a rubber or plastic mallet and just hammer away at that sound deadening. Because it's so cold, it becomes brittle and it should break off in chunks. 
If it doesn't, it's not cold enough. And then you could use a scraper. Actually, in this case, we don't even need a scraper. All of this broke off, so we could just pick up the pieces and throw it out. And then once you're done on one side, move over to the next side and follow the same process. Hammer the sound deadening loose and pick up the chunks that break off like so. Now for whatever reason, in the corner where the seam sealer is, the sound deadening sticks to it and it takes a lot more effort to scrape it off. But nonetheless, it still comes up. And then finally, we're done with this section, so vacuum it all up and move on to the next part of the car. So there you go, it's that easy to do. Let the dry ice do all the work for you. Let it sit for 10, 15, even 20 minutes. Make sure it's ice cold. You can't get it too cold. The colder, the better. Loosen it up with the hammer, scrape it, and pull it all up comes up in big clumps. If it's not coming up, it's not cold enough. But you saw how easy that came up and that's all there is to it. So I have a lot of sound deadening to do because this is a BMW, they put a ton in here. I'm gonna get to it. You guys don't need to watch me do all this. That'll be very tedious. So with the magic of editing, boom, all of the sound deadening has been removed from the trunk to the midsection, to the seats, all the way to the front. The only spot that wasn't removed is this right here and the same thing on the other side. I ran out of dry ice and I'm running low on time so I just need to get this car ready and get it to the cage builder. That's not in the way of the cage. I'll get that out of there once the cage is in but all the other sound deadening has been removed so let's go see what it weighs. And at 2,973 pounds, we have removed about 25 pounds of sound deadening, which is pretty impressive. And there's still a little bit more left to do. So you figure about 30 pounds of sound deadening total. So now with that, let's move on to the next step and remove the headliner and sunroof. Now removing headliners in most cars is very similar. We'll start at the front removing the sun visors and you'll need a little pick to disconnect the electrical connector. Good, then we could pop out the light and disconnect that as well. And finally, we need to use a pick to give us access to the two hidden screws that hold in the visor clip. And then just unscrew them and that comes right out. So with everything from the passenger side removed, I also removed everything from the driver's side. Now we have to work on the center part. In the middle here, we need to remove the panel that gives us access to the sunroof motor. So disconnect both switches from the harness. Then we just need to pop out the map light and disconnect that. And finally, there's one screw holding in the headliner up here. So let's remove it. So with everything at the front of the headliner loose, now we need to start working on the side of the headliner. And the sides of the headliner are held in by grab handles. So pop off the covers and unscrew the two screws holding the handle in. Good. With some editing magic, the other one is removed as well. And with everything on the side removed, I did the driver's side as well. Now we can move on to the last step, which is the rear. At the rear, we have a third brake light cover that pops off. And then there's a plastic fastener holding the rear of the headliner in. So pop it out. And then finally, we need to remove the motion sensor in the middle of the headliner right here. So pop off the cover and disconnect the wire harness and we're good to go. Now the last thing to do is to remove the trim around the sunroof. And with that out, the headliner is completely free to be removed. And you wanna be careful here because it's basically just a giant piece of cardboard. You could easily bend it and crease it. And if you need to recover your headliner, that's definitely not what you want. So carefully remove the headliner. And with that, we just removed 10 pounds. And not only was that 10 pounds, but it's 10 pounds up high. So that's pretty good. It also gives us access to our sunroof and we have to remove the sunroof because in a rollover, it could shatter and shards of glass could get everywhere, which is definitely a safety hazard. Plus this has got to be pretty heavy. It's made of glass, which is heavy. It has a lot of metal and there's electrical motors in there, all of which are heavy and it's heavy up high, which is bad for center of gravity. So let's remove it. So removing a sunroof is actually pretty simple. There's a bunch of bolts in the front that we need to remove. And then there's bolts that go along the edges on the side that we need to remove. And this should come right out. So let's first remove the five bolts holding in the front of the sunroof. Next, at each of the corners, we have a drain tube for when it rains. This drains the sunroof. So if the interior of your car is getting wet, maybe the back carpets, maybe the roof, check these. Sometimes they get clogged with dirt and debris and leaves and stuff, and then get water backing up into the car. So let's remove the drain tube, and then we could unscrew the four bolts holding one side of the sunroof in. Good. And to prevent this from falling or potentially damaging the roof, use something to prop up the sunroof. Or if you have somebody who could help you, have them hold up the sunroof as you unscrew the last four bolts on the other side. And on this last bolt, go nice and slow so you don't drop the sunroof. And finally, you could get under it and carefully lower it down. And this is actually pretty cumbersome and heavy, so be careful. So with our headliner and our sunroof removed, we just lost 
40 pounds. Our headliner is eight pounds and our sunroof is 32 pounds. And that's really good because that's weight that was way up top at the top of the car and that's gonna help lower our center of gravity. Now the only problem is now we have a large gaping hole in our roof, but don't worry, we have a lightweight sunroof delete kit that fits right in like that. So let me show you how to install it. Now before we go and install this, it's very important that we caulk the outside edge with an adhesive sealant. So when adding sealant, it's important to have a consistent thickness and make sure there are no gaps. I'd rather it be too thick going around the perimeter than too thin because we want to make sure this seals all the water out. So caulk around the entire perimeter of the sunroof delete panel. Good. Now before you go and just install the panel, it's very important that you clean the mating surface with a solvent like alcohol to remove any dirt or grease so the caulk bonds to the car properly and we don't get any leaks. So make sure you clean this area very well. And check out all the dirt we removed. Now with that all cleaned up, let's carefully get our panel seated in this hole, just like that, beautiful. And then we're gonna use the stock bolts to hold the panel in, but I'm gonna be using a large washer to distribute the load evenly on the fiberglass, that way it won't crack. So let's screw in the four bolts in the front. Then we could get our two bolts on the driver's side and that bolt in the rear. And finally, the two other bolts on the passenger side and that last bolt in the rear. So that's all there is to installing a sunroof delete kit. Now our big gaping hole is sealed and this only weighs two pounds. It's made of fiberglass, so it's pretty light. So in total, we lost 38 pounds from our roof, which is huge. Now the last part of our weight reduction is gonna to be to remove major parts of the dash. All right, so let's start here. We need to remove this airbag. It's gonna be very heavy. Also, we have this wood trim, which we are selling to help recuperate some of the cost of the car. So we need to be extra careful not to damage this trim and get the tool under the trim and pop it out. Good. Now we can remove the two screws holding the vent in and then the vent comes right out. Next, let's pop open the airbag cover and in here there are four bolts holding the airbag in. Get those out and then we can carefully remove the airbag followed by the airbag cover. Good. Next, let's remove the wood trim over the radio. Then there's two screws holding in the radio, so we need to unscrew both of those. And then now the radio should come out like that. And the last thing holding it in is the wire harness, so pop the clip up and pull that harness right off. Next, we could get the climate control out and disconnect all the connectors on the back of this, and there's a bunch here. And then below that, there's a tray that pulls right out. And then below that, to get the ashtray out, we need to remove the shift knob and then the bezel around the shifter, and then we could unscrew the two screws holding it in. Now let's carefully pull it out, good. And finally, let's put that shifter bezel back on. And for right now, I'm gonna keep it like this because it holds the window switches nicely and it's pretty lightweight. All right, so with all those pieces taken out, we removed 15 more pounds from our car, and we're still not done. We can still do a little bit more. I'm not doing it right now, but we can remove the glove box. I have all the registration and paperwork in there, which we'll need for trailering the car. And I also have to remove the steering wheel, but again, we're gonna wait just because I need to do the zero to 60 test, and it makes it easier to get on a trailer when you have an actual steering wheel. But right now, the dash is ready to be removed with just four nuts. We have a nut here and a nut there, and then a nut there and a nut on the other side. Lower that steering wheel down and the dash will come out so the cage builder could weld up the cage and get it in. And the last thing to do is install our racing seat. Perfect. Okay, with our racing seat in, that looks absolutely incredible. Let's go find out what our final weight is. And it looks like we are at 2,940 pounds. Remember, we started at 3,370 pounds, which means we removed over 430 pounds from this car, which is incredible. That's over 10% of this car's original weight gone, and I cannot wait to see how this car drives. Now, we didn't remove absolutely everything. There are other things in this car that can be removed. For example, the door cards. Part of the rules for the race we're in says that when your windows are rolled down, you have to have door cards to contain the glass just in case the glass breaks in an accident. It won't go into the driver's compartment. So these are gonna stay here. I will probably end up removing the speakers though because those are pretty heavy. Another thing is the airbags. So I didn't remove the side curtain airbags because the dash has to come out for me to remove those. So after the cage is welded in, I'll go remove those airbags. And then one last thing, excess wiring. There's tons of it. We took a lot of stuff out. You don't need all this wiring. I don't wanna cut it right now because I know my luck. I'll cut it and the car won't start. So after the cage goes in, I'll start cutting out the wiring that we don't need. And that's just more stuff to save you some weight. So let's head to the track and go test this car out.
So we're at the track and already this car feels completely different. I cannot wait to see how much faster this car accelerates. So let's go do the zero to 60 test. Okay, moment of truth. Good launch, good shift. seconds okay run number two six point oh nine seconds and we have one more run let's see if we can get this below six seconds 4500 rpms perfect shift in the second We are below six seconds for that zero to 60. Yeah! Yes! Woo! Finally, we finished off with our 60 to zero brake test and all three of them were right around 140 feet, which is a lot better than 170 feet from before. I think losing the weight helped, but I also think we bedded in these brakes during the before tests, which gave us a better braking performance since our brakes are so worn out. Either way, this is a good improvement and less weight to slow down is definitely helping. Now back from the track and all I could say is holy smokes, what a difference not lugging around 430 pounds worth of parts makes. This car feels so much lighter and quicker. I mean, acceleration wise, we saw it's quicker. Braking wise, we saw it braked faster. And it just feels absolutely nimble. What a difference 430 pounds makes. And I wasn't expecting, I wasn't expecting a huge difference and it just, it blew me away. I mean, it kind of makes sense. The seats alone, 60 pounds each. The carpets, 45 pounds. All the fasteners that holds all this stuff in, five pounds, it all adds up and man oh man when you're not carrying that around this thing is a rocket so there you go that is how much weight you could remove from your car and that's being pretty realistic i could still pull out a couple more pounds and i will eventually but this car is ready to go to the welder i can't wait to get that roll cage welded in and as always i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you learned something new if you did remember to give it a thumbs up if you have any questions feel free to comment below i'll do my best to answer them if you're not a subscriber consider hitting that subscribe button and as always all the tools and products I used in this video are linked in the description. The race is coming up soon, so stay tuned.